I hope you guys are doing well. So today we'll be making this Pokemon Evolution animation that was requested quite some time ago. So I finally got around to doing it. The models we will be using do not belong to me. Also the download link for the models can be found in the description below. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. It's a small channel and it won't cost you anything. My goal is to get 1000 subscribers by the mid of this year. Thanks. Um, and let's just get started. First we'll head around to Blender. And um, and we'll just delete the de uh, I'll just delete the default cube, and then I'll create two new collections, one with uh, Charmeleon name, and the other with Charizard. Um, because the models are actually divided into pieces, so let's first import the Charmeleon model file. Import dot obj. I'll just hold, head over to my downloads and download them the dot obj file, and then. <coughs> I'll go to Charizard collection, then file, import, effort, and import the Charizard file or oh, model. <coughs> okay, so one we will we won't be needing uh, the Charizard's uh, tail flame, so delete that. Also, uh, we need to actually fix the Charizard model a little bit according to our requirements because, as you can see, it's uh, sort of a mess. So tab into go to edit mode. Then just click on uh, while hovering over the wings. Click on L to select both of the wings. Click on P uh, to separate by the number selection. And also um, we need to uh, merge the body and head uh, mesh by click uh, selecting the uh, face first, and then click on the body, and then click on Control J. Now it's actually a similar part. So uh, also um, turn this on over here uh, because uh, we actually are going to be needing that as well. So the first thing uh, is going. First things first. Let's go into wireframe mode. Now, uh, as you can see, the Charizard uh, model actually has a triangulated mesh. We actually want it to be uh, in quads. So select all the Charizard mesh. Click on tab to close edit mode. Select all the mesh by clicking select the faces. Tries to quads. Then deselect it. Then we're going to be doing the same with the Charmeleon mesh. Faces. Tries to quads. Um, now I'm I'm just going to make the Charizard mesh unselectable for now, um, and I, because I'm a, I only want to work with the Charmeleon uh, model. So let's go into wireframe mode. We're going to be using a combination of shape keys and a bunch of modifiers and shaders uh, sh and shader to create the effect. So please bear with me. I'm trying my best. Uh, I usually use the AI voice, but uh, for this I actually just wanted to do it myself and it's sort of really hard. So let's just start with the easiest part with the tail frame. We're going to go into uh, over here data object data properties. Click on plus to create a shape key basis and then click on again another sh another shape key. This is called key one. And um, I'm just going to go into tab into edit mode and cl click o G, Y to move it back. And then S to scale and then S to scale it because Char Charizard's frame is actually larger than Charmeleon. So and, uh, and move it on the position of the tip of uh, Charizard still. So now when I toggle this key over here, you can see the flame is moving like that. The same thing we're going to be doing with the Charmeleon model. And remember, the more accurately you move it uh, with respect to Charizard's body, the better it will look. But even if you don't do it, uh, I, uh, as you can see, I did actually didn't, didn't do it in, in the demo video. And uh, we actually used uh, modifiers to uh, hide the fact that we uh, actually did a uh, like a terrible job at uh, modeling Charmeleon to Charizard. But basically, if you actually try to do it uh, so much accurately, it will take too much time. So uh, just do a quick and dirty version. It will be a lot better that way. But if you actually want to, the trick is to make ma make it so that um, uh, you try to ma match the fa uh, match the basically body and faces of the Charizard as much as you can. So um, with Charmeleon model body selected, click on a plus over here in the shape keys tab to add a basis key, and then click on again for for key one. Tap to go into edit mode and then first scale it up and then we'll just move it into position like so. Now the thing is Charmeleon's head is a little bit too bigger over here and then click on O to turn on proportional editing. So we're going to be turning on and off proportional editing uh, according to our needs uh, like so. And then I'm going to move Charmeleon's head like this while also moving the uh, body over here. The tail is actually the easiest part. I'm going to turn off the proportional editing and then uh, S, let's scale it to a Y axis and then just move it like over here. It 
has to be dropped it doesn't have to be uh, completely neat but also make sure that you're inside the charizard model not too much outside of it that's our goal um, so the next bit i think it's going to be uh, the ha arms and the body turn on proportionality again i'll for this bit but this time i'm just going to keep the scale as low as possible and maybe the frontal face part of shared meal could be like so uh, the thing is uh, you don't see this sort of animation in, in 3d mostly because it's uh, it, it will take it would take way too much time to edit something like this to exact accurate proportions now for the arms uh, for the arms you can see um, Charmila actually has them straight but Charizard has them sort of like on the side also the shoulders are a little bit too outside so I guess I'll move this bit to a little bit of on the back mm. again it doesn't have to be perfect but try to make it uh, as much accurate as you can by yourself and make sure that you don't accidentally select uh, uh, the some part that you actually don't want to move. I think this is sort of good enough. Maybe I'll just move the arms. Their place. Even if it's not accurate, um, okay. So now we're actually done with this part as well. Also, we need to add a, a keyframe for Charizard to select its swing, add two keyframes while having this key one selected. Tap to edit mode S zero, and then. You this dot, these are the wings. Just move them over here in this back cavity. So, as you can see, oh yeah. now the thing is, you can actually see this cavity, but that's why we have camera angles. You can actually cheat with stuff like this because, again, in 3D, morphing is like one of the most toughest thing I, uh, things. I guess we will we'll probably not even see um, cross formation where they actually actively show the body changing in even like high detail movies like Pixar and Disney as well. So uh, this is why this thing is sort of avoided. <coughs> so um, the next bit is, um, I'm going to again oh, make the Charger model unselectable. Having the Charmeleon model selected, um, I'll be needing the timeline as well as the graph editor. So add in the uh, graph editor as well. And we're going to go into the shading tab and we're going to be also needing a timeline or graph editor well actually the timeline most likely near here as well so i'll just hide the uh, charger model for now also this next bit is going to be sort of hard to keep up with because uh, we'll have to adjust the keyframes as required so uh, buckle up so for this uh, we'll, uh, well first uh, there are actually three materials one for charge million uh, charge million and uh, two for charizard's body so for all three of them change the blend mode to alpha clip and shadow mode to alpha clip as well this is uh, necessary um, i'll just turn on the charizard body as well for all three of the materials change the blend mode to alpha clip and shadow mode to alpha clip as well So for this um, next bit, shift A, add in a mix shader, add in an emission shader, add in a color ramp, oh and before I forget, I turn on, uh, I guess ambient inclusion is optional but bloom is sort of necessary for this tutorial. So um, yes, we'll first mix the uh, principal BSGF in the mix shader. 
and the color ramp is going to be the controller so add the color to the color ramp into over here also uh, duplicate the emission shader now this standard uh, pokemon evolution typically only has them um, let's just pop up this one to five have them going like white over here like but but in 3d it doesn't actually look as good as it does in 3d uh, in, in 2D, like it as compared to in 2D, 2D only going white, li uh, white bright shining brightly like this actually make them look a lot, a lot good. But for in um, 3D, it doesn't look as attractive. So we're going to be actually making another sh another shader for this. Duplicate the mix shader, plug in it between the uh, emission shader and change the second emission shader strength to change the color to blue. Also strength to uh, five as well plug both of the emission shaders in this uh, mix shader and that mix shader into the other mix shader now sh shift a and add in a layer weight node and facing with into the factor with this uh, and we have this sort of effect going on which makes it look a lot better now mm, again duplicate the mix shader duplicate the color ramp And add in our transparent BSDF. I think you probably know how this is going to work. Let's hope so because so in the starting position, this is a switch that basically turns on and off. It selects oh, uh, what is selected currently right now. So currently the switch is, is uh, pointing to the transparent BSDF. When I move the switch to over here, it's uh, it moves to this uh, mix shader which currently or, uh, has this uh, emission shader turned on so if i move this over here like so it will actually change to turn off the uh, turn on the base shader color on so change these both of these to 0 0.6 and for now this next bit um i guess we're going to be needing keyframes so while having the position on uh, your mouse cursor on the position of this uh, node the one that actually con uh, controls the um, pr this transformation transition. Click I while having it on frame one, and move your timeline to frame twenty four, and then it's turn it to zero, and then click on I again to add in a keyframe. As you can see, this is what's happening, and for um, twenty four fr and now for forty eight frames. 24 plus 48 frames we're going to be animating the rest of the um, transition so on frame 72 this is going to change to transparent so on um, frame um, like uh, let's just say on frame 70 or maybe like frame 65 I'll add a keyframe while have on the second one uh, color ramp and on frame 72 I'll just change it to zero and then add in another keyframe on the position of this. So let's just uh, have a preview to see um, what's going on right now. I think you're so, sort of getting the hang of it. And also during the frame from uh, the time from frame 24, the shape key is going to be activating. So currently the shape key is valued at, uh, at zero. So click on I and on frame ar around. Um, 72 71 I guess each R million is going to change into like so and then we're going to have, uh, add in a keyframe over here as well click on I to add a keyframe on frame 71 for this shape key as well now we're going to be also um, making sure that the in between part like terminal actually looks really really weird like this so to make that look better um, we first need to add in an empty shift a empty plane axis and on this empty uh, rotation click on I to add keyframe on its X Y and Z rotation and on the um, graph editor part you can see that we have a keyframe for um, on its X Y and Z rotation so we can actually click on uh, over here you'll see a modifier tab and click add modifier and add in a noise modifier on it this keyframe you can um, just move it bigger make it bigger uh, we change the offset for uh, the x, y, and z. So for uh, x, I'll just turn it into something random value. It doesn't actually matter. 
for uh, why it's going to be different and for zero I'll just keep the original value also um, change the scale to like 5 for all of them in the x y and z so now that we're, uh, this uh, empty is going to be invisible it's not going to be visible uh, in our render or anything like that so select the main model again and then add modifier just place modifier and click on new to add a new texture go into this texture tab property tab and change it to clouds then um, on 72 well in on 72 actually uh, the charmel model is going to disappear anyway so till 71 i guess we actually want its strength to be 0 0.1 and on 0 0.1 and then we're going to click on i to add naki frame and back in tw frame 24 we are going to also going to uh, add its friend to um, i to add strength uh, i to we're going to click on i on its strength to add in another keyframe on frame 24 and then on frame 23 because again we don't want it to be like this probably weird uh, allergic <laughs> charmeleon so, so on frame 23 we're going to change the strength to zero and then click on i to add another keyframe so on frame 24 it's going to start changing like this but again it's not uh, be, uh, we're not done no, for coordinates from local changes to object and the object is going to be our empty over here so now as you can see it's uh, have it has that effect going on itself now um, we will also just select the flame and on um, frame 72 we want it to be uh, at value 1 and on frame 24 we actually want the flame to be on value 0 there is not much going on in that department now you can see charmian start glowing makes that um, wobbly shining form and then disappears on frame 72 now <coughs> reselect charmian go into shading tab and except for this um, principal BSTF and this uh, image texture select all of these nodes and copy them we are going to be pasting them for Charizard as well um, for Charizard it is going to be reverse uh, for Charmeleon it was a Charmeleon in his diffuse f uh, texture form then in sh it, uh, it uh, starts shining and then it's, uh, it in Charmeleon becomes invisible with Charizard it's opposite Charizard is going to be invisible first then it's going to uh, start shining and then in the end it, it uh, will be in its uh, diffuse texture form so let's go into Charizard shading uh, while having its body a texture I'll just paste these nodes and um, I'll just click this diffuse over here and then in the final render final shader and BSTF in this uh, mix shader slot and again like so but since it's the start part charger doesn't need to be glowing it's it needs to be a uh, sort of glowing well it and it needs to be invisible as well in the start So let's just look at, look at uh, Charmeleon's keyframes. I guess the, the invisible part of Charmeleon uh, happens too fast. So instead of frame 72, uh, move, uh, let's move that to, uh, let's, um, let's move these frames on frame 72 while having this color I'm selected to uh, frame. 96 I guess that will look better also uh, change this color ramp from linear to ease maybe that will make the transition a little bit smoother now oh, let's select Charizard for it um, it's going to be obviously uh, the exact opposite so about at this point frame um, 72 
71 i guess uh, so charge dot will become from being invisible we want the charge dot to become visible so let's add a keyframe over here and then on frame 72 i want charge dot to be visible and then add a keyframe over here so and on a uh, frame um, and also on this um, we select the other color ramp as well and then add a keyframe on its position as well and then on frame 96 which our million disappears we want charges are to appear and then let's add a keyframe over here as you can see the keyframes are important pretty important also um let's just select its face um charge dots other um body a and um Now let's just select uh, charge dot body B texture for that um, that it's also going to be pretty much the same uh, we wanted to start glowing at 72 like so so um, at frame like 71 or maybe let's uh, lower it to like frame 68 We'll add a keyframe on the position of this color ramp I and then on frame 72 we'll add in a keyframe as well and then on frame from on frame 72 as well um, on the other color ramp uh, add in a keyframe on position node and then move it to like 96 and then change the position to 0 0.6 and then add in a keyframe as well as you can see charmian grows and it's almost as the same sh shape as charge rod and then it uh, moves along so on about uh, i guess at frame 68 i think the charge rod's wings should um, properly start appearing rather than just you know randomly uh, popping up so on the keyframes tab um, change the value to z uh, one click i on the keyframe and then at about frame 96 make the wings appear again and then click on i to add in a keyframe okay so now <coughs> we're going to be also adding the uh, same modifiers on charge dots body as well um, we can copy those modifiers i guess so mm, while having charmian's body selected but basically, uh, first select uh, the wings charizard's, charizard's wings, then its body, then Charmeleon's body, making sure that Charmeleon is um, the last, uh, the primary object. So click on Control L, and then we're going to be copying modifiers. But we're going to be um, changing the modifiers uh, keyframes according to the requirements. Basically, as 96 charizard has appeared. So at that, and at that point, like I said, Charizard is going to be behaving opposite to that of Charmeleon. So it's it being wonky like this doesn't make sense. So at zero point uh, at frame ninety five, its strength is going to be uh, at fr at frame ninety six. Str uh, the strength of the displacement modifier on Charizard and its Sphinx is going to be zero. Then we're going to add a keyframe, and we're going to keep it uh, at. Um, 0 0.1 on frame 90 and it doesn't matter before that because charge is invisible anyway as you can see so uh, at frame 9 frame 96 we actually want the displacement modifier to be perfectly zeroed out and we're also going to be doing the same thing with the um, wings The displacement modifier strength should be zero, and then uh, it ha should have some sort of strength when it appears at the first point. Or point. Like so. We are still not done. 
now select the chart million model now for the final touch i guess and add a modifier and then add in a shrink wrap modifier instead of on surface i guess it should be inside uh, inside can work also on also on surface and the near sur near sur surface point also options also works and the target should be charizard's uh, body shape mesh um, now this f is the fun bit part charizard's body basically um, starts uh, appearing completely at frame 90 so at frame 90 we want the shrink wrap modifier to activate but based on um, uh, um, active so at frame 90 we're going to click on i over here on our render tab and on our i guess uh, viewport display to add in keyframes and on frame 90 89 we actually want uh, these to be turned off like so now if you actually want to see the final results You can also edit a little bit of the keyframes like this bit over here. It like it looks, looks bad because Charmeleon's uh, emission shader is uh, shining and um, Charizard isn't. So we can go back into the shading tab and um, change the keyframes, I guess, for uh, Charmeleon's shader. Yes, about over here. They're still not perfect, but you can still move them around. So let's just view the final result. By click on, let's play, uh, click on the play button. Start shining, changing, change its form. Start its form appears, and voila. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and watch another one of my videos, as that's how the YouTube algorithm works. It's a small channel and it won't cost you anything. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.